what's going on in Syria, jumping for music and arts, it's horrible things in Syria, you know, more than two years now of, uh, of a civil war, and uh, it was the most peaceful Arab Spring revolution, now it's the uh, most bloody one, and, uh, uh, and I think after 100,000 been killed already, uh, Obama's administration uh, comically draw the, uh, uh, the line in the sand, uh, by saying using chemical uh, warfare by the uh, uh, Bashar's uh, regime. Now there is a talking about uh, bombing uh, uh, Syria, bombing Saddam's uh, capability, military capability. It was almost um, threatening. Now back to the Congress debating. America is debating uh, should we go in, should we bomb uh, Syria or not. Uh, the majority of people are against the bombing, only 30% support. One of the few wars with the minority really support the war. And um, uh, so I had a chance to talk to a Syrian artist. She lives in uh, uh, Los Angeles as an artist. You know, what it would it be like uh, to be an artist here uh, away from home that you see is just uh, being destroyed and uh, vanished? And, um, and I really had this conversation with her on Skype. Uh, uh, we didn't have a good visual. so. Uh, you might not see her, but you can see her arts. So we'll finish this with um, uh, a conversation with the Syrian artist, uh, Fadi Afash, and uh, we'll see you next week. Salaam alaikum and God bless you all. All my life against war and anti-war, but now we are in a situation that I guess everyone should come with uh, an empty plate and think about the human issues that mm -hmm. we have unfortunately no, no other options because the situation really really bad and if we waited more the situation will be a disaster so obviously uh, this military and all this uh, international intervention of Iranian Russian uh, Chinese and uh, Hezbollah in Syria Unfor unfortunately, uh, we need another intervention to stop this intervention, and this is how yeah. ironic is that. Yeah. But not we we ask Obama not to uh, just go for punishment for Assad. That this is it, because the punishment will be ju not just for Assad, because Assad he has a hostage, and the hostage is Syrian people. The the Americans uh, usually don't uh, don't have uh, a clear. Uh you know, uh, vision or mission or goal of uh, uh, interfering. And usually they are seeking, uh, you know, their self-interest and uh, it end up uh, the people who are trying to help they are the victims, like in Iraq and Afghanistan and all that. Unfortunately, this is true so far because we have an example. As you said, Iraq is a big, horrible example about the policy of the U.S., but hopefully, hopefully, I don't know, when, uh, you know, Obama get elected and we were having a hope that the vision will be different, that something will come out different from the foreign policy of the U.S. And now, day by day, we are losing hope. You think that uh, just bombing and not boots on the ground? Actually, because as I told you, the experience with the boots of the ground is not good so yeah. far. Mm -hmm. And uh, to be honest with you, we were asking the U.S. long time ago that please, we just need no fly zone, and we will do the other because we know, you know, our regime is not really powerful. The only thing the, our regime is killing us because he has the sky, he sees the sky, and uh, other than that, he's not really strong. Imagine uh, one year ago, or one year and a half, if Obama took a stand and he helped us in this no-fly zone and humanitarian corridors, the situation would be much better and we will save um, Syrian people a lot of blood and atrocity. But uh, they are too late. But even though we just want to save the rest of our children, if we could do that. Uh, how do people... Uh... You are you live in, uh, in California, Los Angeles. So how, mm -hmm. how's it like there? What, what do people tell you? What kind of uh, looks they give you? I mean, uh, 
So mm-hmm. how are you managing there and uh, what, what question they ask you? It's very, uh, it's like uh, Los Angeles, it's like a small globe. You find every point of view, you find every culture, you find very different people and you find uh, intellectual, you find ordinary people. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's varies. But in general, um, uh, to be honest with you, American people, very passionate people in general, and they are uh, really care, but they are not educated enough through their media. So they know, like, for example, about the war, the uh, service image. They don't know um, the atrocity or, or the living or the history, or um, they don't expect, for example, sometimes to find the... Uh, similar people for them, like them, that a lot of Americans, they unfortunately think it's a very far land and it's very unsimilar and something like that. And when sometimes meets uh, some Syrian like me, feel they are a little bit shocked. Uh, on the other hand, I find a lot of intellectual people, they really take care uh, about their education and they pursue every information through internet and by their own resources, because unfortunately the media here uh, rarely send um, send um, the clear message or the clear uh, image for everything happening in this earth. But in general, American people are so really nice people, but uh, they are a little bit um, away from the image. So, so I, what I'm trying now, I'm trying just to talk to them as much as I can. Uh, send send them the messages, my parents and my friends, my students uh, from Syria, telling them the stories, what's happening to us, uh, telling them even the stories for the people in Bro Assad in Syria, because the situation in Syria is not just uh, hard for people who are against the regime. It's very hard and harsh, but even though now, after two years and a half, the situation in general is horrible. It's not country anymore. So everyone in Syria just asking for ending this period of time to start to have normal life again, because it's not really a good place to live anymore. Uh, you still have your uh, family back home. Uh, are you in contact with them at all? Yeah, sometimes I lose contact with them because they uh, when they bomb uh, the central telephone center I spend um, uh, weeks without uh, talking to them I was talking other with other friends to check on them and to tell me that they are safe or what is the situation now I'm calling them I called them yesterday and to be honest with you people inside they just give up they are too tired they are thinking now about the painkiller more than anything. They are thinking about their everyday bread more than anything else. As an artist who is living now uh, far away and um, uh, can't really interfere in, in, in the conflict over there in a, in, a, in a more direct and meaningful way, how, how do you how do you deal with that? How is that? Uh, your work. Yeah, I feel, to be honest, very, very hopeless. I feel it's a, everything has changed me. Everything I lost faith in everything in this globe. I don't have a faith anymore because you cannot just accept by your heart and your mind what's happening over there and accept that we are in 2013 and we have all this connection and all this civilization between quotation and we have this Middle Ages photos and images and way of torture and I just lost faith in everything, even everything. I, I'm not, I don't know if I will one day be uh, again a normal person or, or not. Uh, I am full of anger, anger. Uh, I am very angry and uh, um, even now I'm not able to be honest with you to bend anything because I feel no point of that. I feel just what is the the reason of even being exist? I feel so hopeless. Well, that's a, uh, you know, a very peculiar uh, situation to be as an artist and uh, 
I think uh, your message and your art is uh, very powerful and uh, has uh, a very uh, lasting and, uh, uh, message. Uh, I, uh, go ahead. I was having this feeling, uh, sorry, I was having this feeling uh, when uh, everything starts over in Syria. Now, uh, to be honest with you, I, I just feel it's all about money and power and interest. Yeah. And maybe we have effects, but it's like the fly, butterfly effects. It's so small. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you really will see the effects of the wall. I am doing what I can, but not with the same faith I used to have. I am doing this not just to prevent myself from regretting not to doing anything and to be passive. I am going on talking to people sometimes uh, trying to have a discussion panel or anything to educate people, but to be honest with you, not with with not the same heart. Mm -hmm. My heart is broken. I am, but I am doing th that just because I feel this is my duty, and probably with this small small hope, sometimes I will create an effect. Sometimes, but to be honest with you, I'm doing th that just to to express that so this is my duty I don't want in the future to regret not doing anything or to watching because I have to do it but I am tired I am very tired and very you know when it's personal uh, it's too hard well Fadi Afash is a Syrian artist who lives in uh, Los Angeles California t talking about the uh, situation in Syria and uh, we wish you uh, the best and uh, I think uh, we cannot uh, lose hope and uh, I mean uh, the Syrian revolution was the most peaceful and the longest peaceful revolution and uh, it just turning to be a bloody and the bloodiest one is just beyond me so Fadia good luck and uh, we wish you well and uh, and I think uh, there must be some hope somewhere and uh, keep oh, painting. Okay. Thank you so much. You know, um, everything is depends on everyone in this earth. Everyone, if we, we do our part, probably will create hope. If we are passive, there is no hope, unfortunately. And that uh, wonderful note, we, we wish you well and, uh, and, uh, and uh, well, thank you. Thank you a lot. And, uh, and, and we'll, uh, I'm sure we'll be talking to you soon. Oh. Thank you so much.